types of data. The idea here is to identify the different types of data. So we will begin with many definitions that categorize the different types of data. First, we begin by looking at a parameter. A parameter is a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of the population. A statistic is a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a sample. Now remember that we had defined statistics earlier as a subject, but this definition of statistic is a, an actual value of a sample. Back to the parameter, if we take a look at the average age of all Kenyatta College students that we might have gotten from the registrar's office, then that average age would be considered a parameter. On the other hand, if we took a small sample of Kenyatta College students, the average age of our small sample would be a statistic. A quantitative data set is a collection of numerical values. It's a set consisting of numbers representing counts or measurements. In contrast, a categorical data set would consist of names or labels that are not numerical. For example, gender or the shirt number on an athlete's uniform. Now the number on the shirt might be a number, but it has no special statistical meaning as a number. Somebody's shirt numbered 10 is not greater than anybody another person's shirt numbered 5, for example. A lot of the work that we'll be doing will be with quantitative data, numerical data. We will be doing some work with qualitative or categorical data as well. But let's focus for a moment on quantitative data. Quantitative data can be further broken down into discrete or continuous. A discrete data set results when a number of possible values is either finite or a countable number, countable meaning we can count 1, 2, 3, etc. For example, the number of eggs that a hen would lay would be a countable or a discrete set of values. In contrast, a continuous data set would result from an infinitely many possible values that would correspond in some continuous scale. For example, the amount of milk that a cow produces, we don't, nece we don't necessarily just say one or two or three gallons, we can say 2.343115 gallons. We can further break down the different data with levels of measurement. A nominal level of measurement would be characterized by data that consist of categories, names. The data cannot be arranged in any meaningful order.
an ordinal level of measurement is a set of data that you can arrange in some meaningful order. However, the distances may not be well defined. The distances between those values may not be well defined. An interval level of measurement allows the data to be arranged in order and this time the distance can be defined. However, there is no natural zero or starting point. The highest level of measurement would be a ratio level. It would be essentially an interval level of measurement with the additional property that a zero or a starting point is defined. One way to look at the ratio level of measurement is that if you can make a comparison between two values and say that some value is twice the value of another. So here's a quick summary of our four levels of measurement. And this is the end of section 1-3.